If you dive at 200 meters from the beach, you won't find any fish during your descent. Only when you reach the lake floor, which looks like a lunar landscape at around 11 meters deep, you'll finally see fish. They are all at ground level. This is a couple of Limnochromis auritus tending to their nest. If nothing extraordinary happens, they will stay here for a long time. The nest consists of several small pits, some of them with a tunnel. They maintain all the pits, but they only use one at a time. The maintenance consists in removing silt, increasing the size of the pit and length of the tunnel that can reach up to a meter in length. They are moth brooders and both parents alternate incubation, exchanging the eggs and fry frequently. After about a week, they release them in one of the pits. There can be over 300 fry and both parents will continue to protect them for a few weeks, until the fry leave the nest and the parents are ready to breed again. The fry are constantly alert to the parents' instructions to hide or to come out of the nest. The body language of the parents gives them not only the information about what they should do, but also how dangerous is the situation. The silty floor causes the water to have poor visibility, and both parents are constantly alert to immediately identify each fish that comes out of the fog. In order to assess the danger, each fish is evaluated according to the species, size and the way it's behaving. A tetracanthus cruising at the back is no reason to worry. They also create pits and share the lake floor with the limnochromis, although the tetracanthus is much more common. One of the parents watches over the fry, allowing the other to feed and perform maintenance in the several pits that make up their nest. Even though the dim silhouettes passing at the back are barely visible, the parents know that they don't pose a direct threat to their fry. They are Xenotilapias, a fish that moves in large groups close to the lake floor, constantly sifting the silt. This female Ocelatus is not passing by. She lives right at the edge of the Limnochromis nest. She is the guardian of a few shells that she covers and uncovers as she needs. Unlike the Limnochromis, she doesn't form a stable relationship. Her small territory is part of a much larger male's territory that can include several females. Living close to a nest of a much larger fish has a great impact in her life, with both advantages and disadvantages. They are among the boldest fish in the lake, which is quite surprising given their tiny frame. This tiny shell dweller also lives right at the borders of the Limnochromis nest. It's a female Neolamprologus ornatipinis, Although she is a much more timid fish, the fact that she has fry of her own at the moment makes her even more aggressive than the Ocelatus. These tiny warriors at the edge of the Limnochromis nest create a first line of defense against predators of the fry. And on the other hand, the Limnochromis also provide protection to these female shell dwellers and their fry. She has no fry at the moment, and therefore her aggression level is unusually low, letting these two young tetracanthus go with just a flare of the gills.
the ornate penis female is on a different stage of her life and acts accordingly towards a potential predator of her fry. A bigger fish deserves a bigger reaction. Caring for the young in such an open area with low visibility is a stressful task, and having these extra pairs of eyes and mouths at the edge of the nest give the Limnocrobis couple some valuable help in keeping predators away from the center of the nest, where the fry live. In contrast to the Limnocromis, the fry of the Urnati pinis are in a much smaller number and stay on the ground. They move in small quick bursts and feed on tiny prey they find on the silt surrounding their mother's shells. It's not safe to make assumptions about the personalities of these fish only based on their species, or even to try to predict or understand their behaviors without long observation. Each one of them has its own personality, based not only on genetics but also on their life experiences. Although they get clear advantages by sharing the territory, their cohabitation is far from peaceful. When there's no enemies around, they can focus on the hostility they feel for each other. The female Ocelatus is the main instigator, and she seems to lack a proper sense of her size. These brawls don't have any serious consequences for any side, and the Limnochromis is quite a peaceful fish, by Tanganyikan standards, of course. Both fish seem aggravated just by seeing the other scratch on the silt. It's a good sign that they have time to indulge in these skirmishes. They are both mothers with fry, but this is taking place right next to the Ornatipini's shell, so she has a reason to be more aggressive, and therefore she has the upper hand. The Shenotilapias are back, and the residents must stay alert. The Shenotilapias themselves don't pose a threat, not even to the fry, but there are others trying to pass unnoticed among them, like this Lepidiolamprologus cunintoni. In Lake Tanganyika, size is far from being the most important factor in deciding who wins a fight. The small female shell dwellers that choose to live next to the nest of a bigger fish also face a difficult challenge, finding a partner that is motivated enough to endure the unwelcoming disposition of the Limnochromis. At times when the Limnochromis have too much time on their hands, they also enjoy getting to the shell dweller's nerves by other means. The two Limnochromis are distracted, and the female Ocelatus seizes the opportunity to seduce the male, but is not daring enough. It's possible that she is being forced to synchronize her breeding cycles with the times that the Limnochromis are not protecting their fry. At the end of the day, this arrangement must be worthwhile for all parties, because none of them is forced to live next to each other. That being said, the Limnochromis seem to have the best part of the deal.
the female ocelatos that live by themselves lead a much more peaceful life. But on the other hand, they are much more confined to the surroundings of their shells without the protection of larger fish. These fish are capable of establishing relations with different species and are highly adaptable to a variety of conditions within certain limits. Yet, none of them can live in shallow waters. The water movement would risk burying the shell dwellers in their shells and the limnochromis fry on their nests. This male ornithipinis is being escorted out by the female ocelatus. One of the limnochromis decided to help, and the female ornithipinis was not too happy. Although the two females live nearby, they have little to no interaction. The Xenotilapias are back, but this time the Limnochromis detected a menace following them that requires a strong defense measure. At the sign of the parents, the fry rush to their mouths. With the fry safe in its mouth, the Limnochromis tries to keep the shoal of Xenotilapias at bay. Traveling among them, there are Lepidio Lamprologus, which means eaters of Lamprologus. They prey on small fish, and the adults can even eat a small ocelatus. On the Ornatipini site, the fry already know that they have nothing to fear from the Xenotilapias or from the small crab that lives inside the shell. She doesn't like the crab, but she hasn't found a way to evict it. Something far more dangerous than the Lepidio Lamprologus is pushing the Xenotilapia's shoal around, and the Limnochromis keep the fry in their mouths. She tries to keep an eye on her young, but they are far more unruly and independent than the Limnochromis fry. Soon they will disperse through the lake floor. Until then, she will keep a few shells uncovered to serve as refuge for them. The Xenotilapias are trying to feed, but there's something around that inspires terror to all these fish. She knows how to deal with fish many times her size, but this crab is not intimidated by her threats. The Limnochromis are getting increasingly nervous as they watch the shoal of Xanotilapias being pushed from side to side. On the Ornatipini site, the female is scrutinizing all fish passing by. The smaller Lepidio Lamprologus prey mostly on fry hiding in the silt. The huge number of Xenotilapias are causing the silt to lift, and the visibility is getting worse. Whatever is chasing them is still around, and they seek safety in numbers.
they're gone, and life can get back to normal for a while. The visibility is still very poor, and the fry are taking a great risk by feeding on plankton so high above the nest. The Emperor Cichlid The undisputed king of Lake Tanganyika, the largest cichlid in the world, is so big that he could even swallow an adult Limnochromis. In this area, they seem to prefer the Shanotilapis though, and they have plenty at their disposal. Although they claim their share, it doesn't seem to have a noticeable impact on their numbers. Life goes on. Yeah, the chief is is in there some, but he is not. She yeah, he is not stay at in some. He separate from some to to the other village. Yeah. The chief, the if you make the club or maybe kill the people, the chief they sometimes they charge. Yeah. If you maybe I, if I kill my 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 friend or any person, maybe the chief will charge. You can find the maybe you can give him the goats. You know the goats. Yeah, maybe he, he, he tell you maybe to give to give the, that family maybe five goats. Maybe the sack of meal meal. Maybe the white, white clothes and the white chicken, maybe the sack of salty and the money, maybe. Yeah. I see. Sometimes the chief will uh, start, uh, start, uh, start maybe to, to go to to many many village to start to tell the people if you like the fishermen they say maybe each boat they give the chief maybe three three boys boys of carpenter each boat each boat yeah from Chivanga to Nsumb all the village and the, to the farmers they start to give him the cassava and mess with the chief. Yeah. Three weeks later, the young Limnochromis are still living under the guard of their parents, and they have grown considerably. They are still using the same nest, and they are now too big to seek refuge inside the mouths of their parents. There aren't as many as before, but still, the parents did an incredible job in protecting them in this open lake floor. As they grow, they become too big for some of their previous predators, but on the other hand, they get the attention of others. Soon, they will leave the nest and scatter through the immense silty floor of this bay. Their parents will stay and start the process of rearing another batch of fry all over again.
nowadays our people around the lake see these conservation problems. We see it as a good thing or it's a big problem for them. Large, large part of the population has seen the decline in the and, they, and, it, and it's, it's being sharp enough that they realize it's a, it's a serious threat to their own life. And, it's a threat. Um, and they perhaps don't know exactly what the solution is, so they have an open mind to discuss and, and, and um, collaborate. It's good. Cause if we, if, we, if they allow the people to go in the national park, they finish all the fish. Yeah. So they keep some fish there. Yeah. Like if the Zungus comes going to catch there. In, in the uh, open area, there is nothing. Yeah, if you drop the line, no biting. If you go there, you can bite. Yeah, and you kill the more fish to the national park. Yeah, with the poacher, they finish the lions. Yeah, they're using the wires to set the wires. That's why the lions finish. Because they finish the animals if they allow the people to go there. Yeah, so it's good. They keep the animals. Maybe if he, can, can I say, my child can't see the, the elephant. Oh, some people finish the elephant. Some, maybe my child you can see in the pictures. Yeah, that's why it's good to keep the animals like that. Hello, Buana. Here you are again. Haven't you found what you are looking for yet? Maybe you are not looking in the right place. You should follow Mtosi over there. No, that's too close. You see? We just go on with our little lives here. There's not much more I can tell you. Wait, Buana, I have another suggestion. Look for Namansi, his lady friend. She lives nearby. Don't worry, my voice is just in your head. It will follow you. No, Buana, you're going the wrong way. It's here. You can put your detached eyes on the ground. Yes, that's her. Namansi moved here some time ago. What? You can't see her? Ah, that's because she isn't moving. Now you see her? She lives by herself, as you can see. She also likes shells, but she doesn't need many. Two or three are enough for her. She likes to keep them a bit buried. She spends some time in each of her shells. And she has her favorite, of course. Namansi is what I call a waiting person, because that's what she does most of the time. She waits for Mtosi. He visits her from time to time, but he never stays long.
people like Namansi, normally, they have to live in places that no one else wants because they have no one to protect them. Mtosi must be nearby. Can you see how her eyes and belly turn dark? That only happens when she wants to look attractive for him. See? She is always trying to get close to him. And he is always trying to keep his distance. No, Buana, this is not Mtosi. Now, this is Mtosi. He makes sure no other guys get close to her. That is all the protection he provides. Other than that, she's on her own. She has to clean the entrance to her own house. If she was mine, she wouldn't have to do that. Kalambo and Kala also pay her a visit from time to time. Their manners are the same wherever they go. They help in keeping strangers away, like they do around my house. What happened to her? Did he get her? It happened so quickly that even I couldn't see. Oh, there she is. This is why it's so important to keep the entrance to the shells clean, and also to clear paths to the shells. Even Colombo seems to care for her more than Mtosi. The truth is, Namansi is alone. She can only count on herself. If she doesn't take proper care of her house, no one will. We are even smaller than Namansi, especially our ladies. But we live together as a family, and that makes a whole lot of a difference. These young yellow and blue tails don't pose any threat. Yet. Namansi doesn't find little tasty critters in the water like we do. She picks them off the floor. She is very suspicious of strangers passing by, as she should be. Kala and Kalambo know that Namansi wouldn't harm their children, so they let her be. Just look at Kala's dorsal fin. 
She had a conversation with Colombo's other wife that obviously didn't end well. You see, this is where we and her kind are quite different. We don't waste too much time with warnings. The clearest message is a lightning quick bite on the tail. And here comes Mtosi for a lightning quick visit. Watch out! These people are the bane of our lives. Coming out backwards is extremely dangerous. You have to react instantly to any hint of movement outside. Boko, that filthy, horrid, nasty, repulsive. Unbelievable. Don't you agree, Buana? Even Kala and Colombo can't get rid of him, and she stood her ground. And speaking of Colombo. Now he comes back to check on her. I'm sorry, Buana. I'm really starting to hate Mtosi, and he hasn't even done anything to me yet. No, I don't hate everybody. Why don't you hate him too? I mean, Namansi is the nicest, bravest, cutest girl of her kind, and he treats her like that. I know, I can be a little rough with my ladies here and there, but I would never despise any of them like this. Well, people like Mtosi can't settle anywhere for long, much less hold on to a high traffic area like the one right outside of my house. One day, he'll go away, and someone better will come along. Get inside, Namansi. Did you see that? I told you that they can't be trusted. That thing she does of only entering her shell at the last moment is really stressing me out. And her way of coming out of the shell is also extremely unnerving. She should find a larger shell so she can turn around inside like we do. Get back inside, Namansi. Again, at the last moment. Have you noticed how she gets out of the shell? It's little by little with small quick movements, trying not to get noticed. I don't know about you, but my heart always jumps when she does this. I'm always afraid that someone is going to come from behind and snatch her. Her life is not only very lonely, but also very dangerous. We have to be on alert when the sand people come. There's other people traveling with them. Careful with this one. I know your face very well, you scoundrel. Leave her alone. She hasn't a moment's rest. She's warning you, Mboko. Take 
that, you sordid beast. Ouch! I hope she's okay. Moba doesn't want to fight. She's telling Mboko to leave it. Say what you want, Wana, but the people from the shells are the bravest of the Great Lake. She deserves far better than that good-for-nothing piece of nothing. If you ask me, Buana, I'd say she's happier when he's away. But I guess she wouldn't agree with me. Women rarely agree with me. Go back to the dark place you came from, you sordid things. Good. She's standing her ground. I never considered this, but do you think that their obsession with checking every shell on their way is because they may be looking for small children like Chaitika does? I always felt that they were the creepiest couple around. Back to waiting for Umtosi to pass by again. She's playing hard to get. Good for her. Off he goes. Women are like children, Wana. They don't know what's best for them. I have the same problem at home. Now that he's shown a bit of interest in her at that shell, she won't leave it. Nothing else matters. She's just waiting for his return. Every time she calls him and he turns his back, I feel like cutting him into tiny little pieces and feeding him to the yellow and blue tails. Him! Not her! Not her! She will never return. You will never see her again. Go away and die a horrible death. I so wish this was true. Thank you.
a strange game these two are playing. Moba and Mboko can do what they want with her other shells. She no longer cares. She only cares about the shell Mtosi likes. Just look at her, Buana, standing her ground in the midst of all the danger and madness. She's invisible to everyone except you and me, Buana. She's just invisible. Was that? You may guess it was me, but guessing is all you can do. No, Juana, I'm not trying to distract her from him. It wasn't even me. That's all there is to our lives, Buona. Empty shells and dust.
Can you see her? She's still there, fighting amidst the dust. Do you think you can learn something from her, Buona? <laughs>